I was digging around in my storage unit looking for one specific figure I needed to make a video when I came across this hidden gem, the Samurai Spider-Man. And my initial thought was, this is the dumbest thing I have ever seen. But in the spirit of the Spider-Verse, I figured we could dust it off and decide for ourselves. Is it dumb or is it cool? So here it is, the Samurai Spider-Man from Bandai. I think this was in their SH Figure Arts line. Really, really cool packaging. I want to say that this came out in like 2017, so it has been stuck in storage for, what, six, seven years? I just absolutely forgot about it. I'm sure what I did was I pre-ordered it, and then when it came in, I just didn't really have any kind of place for it in my display and it just ended up in a box and then the next thing you know it ended up in storage kind of like what happened with the Ark of the Covenant but uh, here he is here's the back of the package with some really sweet product shots on there really really nice and again super cool image on the front for the Samurai Spider-Man so let's let's see if we can lift off the top of this box and see what's inside here's the instructions and these actually are kind of helpful I think they really do kind of go through how to utilize each of the different weapons and the different parts you can see right here he has a, a web shooter attachment that they teach you how to how to use but let's look and see exactly what is in this package and we'll take off the protective plastic cover so that we can get a better look Ooh, wow I mean just right off of the bat look at how those colors really really pop out that is so nice so you can see we're gonna get four sets of hands fist uh whippy hands looks like uh and then maybe some let's see what are these these look like they're grip hands and a pair of kind of wider grip hands so that's part of our eight sets of hands you get the katana blade and the scabbard for that and then there's these awesome hooks that are on like really long chains that come all the way around and attach to little web shooters and the web shooters are actually in the shape of spiders you can see like the spider legs wrapping around and the the chain is coming out of the the abdomen of the spider so really pretty pretty nice touch on that but let's get this guy out of his box get him on the spinner and see exactly what we've got okay guys so right off of the bat in the cool versus dumb debate I gotta admit, this thing actually does look pretty cool. Now, the whole concept of a Samurai Spider-Man is pretty out there. I mean, that that is, you know, really stretching the property pretty far. But if you're gonna do it, at least do it right. And it certainly looks like this figure has been done very, very well. You can see that you can get him into a really great crouching Spider-Man pose. The thwip hands work really well with this, but when he's down hunched like this, you can see how much movement this costume, this samurai garb has. All of those padding and armor pieces actually do move and flow with the costume really well. When you look at the way that they kind of flay off of his shoulders and down through his hips, plus the pieces that are uh, up on his uh, neck and wrapping around his head, each one of those is individually articulated. And so you can see that it really does give us the ability to have him in a very, very spider etic sort of look. So I gotta say, right off of the bat, I'm kind of leaning cool on this one. All right, so we've pulled the figure back down. Let's get down into the nitty gritty details of this because when it comes to these high-end import figures, there is always a lot to love when it comes to all of the little details. So we'll start up top and take a look at the head sculpt and it really does have a very unique flavor. I like the profile that it has with the nose and the chin pointing out. You can see that the sculpted web lines are like really, really nicely done and this almost kind of grayish grayish blue it almost has like hints of green in there work really really well like I said these these pieces here are individually articulated so when you rotate the neck up they don't they don't crunch onto themselves they actually fold over the top 
to give a little bit more articulation there. And you can get actually pretty good bend with that. Of course, he has his neck guard, again, that is a separate articulated piece. And it has all of the different sculpting to it as well. The eyes are really quite demonic looking to me. You know, he's got this kind of furrowed piece that comes down, but it gives him a really, really cool look. And there's there's a little hint of subtle shading in the white that helps to, to you know, make that happen. The ne- he has more neck armor here. And then as we get into the chest plate, you can see based on the shadows that the chest plate itself has the sculpted in web lines. They're not highlighted with paint. They're simply like the divots on a golf ball almost, but it's a really, really nice touch. Of course, gorgeous spider logo across the chest, a unique one, which I think is, is a, good, a good play. These shoulder gauntlets here, both of them are on rotating peg joints. So again, they don't hinder the articulation. You can actually get them into a number of different poses. And you've got ball joints, double elbows, like hidden underneath. I did think these web shooters are one of the cooler aspects. You know, this is like a feudal times samurai figure, so you're not going to have a bunch of metallic tech. And so going with like an actual spider looking web shooter is just a really, really nice touch. It gives it that kind of organic feel, but still remaining true to the character. Same thing over here, he has one here, and then here's his katana blade, and as you see, if I pop it forward a little bit, it has a really sweet spider logo right there on the hilt, so really, really good looking. The scabbard popped right off, but that gives us an opportunity to look at it. It pegs right into the back, and again, it's on that same kind of circle peg, and so you can get you know good posability from it. Another terrific spider logo. I actually would have preferred that this be red. It, it kind of just falls into the folds of the back piece of his chest armor here. Uh, maybe a change that I would have recommended on that. Moving down, he does have his knife. This doesn't come out, but he has this, his sorter, his shorter sword there. And again, like I mentioned when we were spinning him, these have good movement. And so when you get the legs out, and he can do almost a full split, it doesn't really mess with it. I I love the billowing aspect of his lower legs, and it has nice paint wash over the top. You can see some of that gray coming in over the top of the blue that really brings out the details in the skull. Coming down, again, nice kind of spider web rope-like coming over his boots. And of course, with his feet, he has the one-toed slippers that I just really know from Storm Shadow figures over the years. But as you come down to the bottom, he's actually got like web treads on the bottom. And of course, he does have really nice toe articulation. So pretty sweet. Overall, a really, really balanced action figure. So what's the verdict? I mean, this thing definitely had the potential to be really, really dumb. Spider-Man just does not have any kind of outside of Queens, New York history to him. But with these Bandai figures, particularly this line of samurai figures that they did, they took such good care in addressing all of the details while also remaining true to the original designs of the character. I mean, the thing is, you can immediately tell that this is Spider-Man. The web lines, the eyes, and particularly the way that they got the eyes to work within the concept of the headdress and the mask. You know, they utilized the different samurai parts of his armor to continue some of the design elements of the classic Spider-Man costume. And then I really love how they did the shaded dimpling of the web lines on the chest armor plate. So when it really comes down to it, I think that I'm going to have to go with cool on this one. I I didn't know that I was going to like it when I first found it in storage. And I was like, oh, this is so dumb. I'm going to make a video. Is this is this cool or dumb? But now that I spend a little bit more time with it, I gotta say, I think it's actually pretty daggum cool. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit like if you kind of dig these sort of reviews of figures. And if you really want to help the channel grow, subscribe to Carbon Scoring, where we bring you the best in comics history and action figures every single week.